Let's jump ahead um, just from 1955, Tehard, to 1957, back with uh, another um, strain of the oligarchical class, speaking about the Malthusian eugenics religion of the New World Order. We have, again, Julian Huxley, uh, the father of UNESCO, who said eugenics and evolution would be the backbone of this international education system. Uh, 1957, he's talking about here, religion without revelation. And again, uh, that's a huge theme right there. Christ came and accused the Pharisees of their religion, their man-made religion, and the rejection of revelation. Um, and here we have uh, maybe one of the PR people for the uh, Pharisees or the Kabbalists speaking about <clears throat> this religion. And again, we have to bear in mind, we're also talking about the master class who's going to separate itself in more evident ways um, in order to uh, launch their ascension. The human species can, if it wishes, transcend itself. Not just sporadically, an individual here in one way, an individual there in another way, but in its entirety collective ascension as humanity. We need a name for this new belief, perhaps transhumanism will serve. Trans, you're in a transition to post-human. We've moved beyond being human, uh, possibly subhuman, but not human at all. What would be one way of doing that? Well, humans were devised and designed by their creator with a certain genetic code. So tampering with that code alone would probably make somebody less than human and biblically speaking, unredeemable in the eyes of the creator. Perhaps transhumanism will serve man remaining man, but transcending himself. Esoteric biopolitics. That's what I need to take biopolitics. And <clears throat> of course, you can't do that at the university system because um, if something is uh, occulted, that's where it belongs. It doesn't have any place for the education of the Goyim. But transcending himself by realizing new possibilities of and for his human nature. So we have this Malthusian New World Order with a religion of evolution and eugenics. And back in 1957, we're going to turn a page and this is going to be revamped, this Malthusian crypto eugenics into transhumanism, this transitional point until we transcend ourselves in what Tehard would call the omega point or the singularity. A couple more quotes from Julian Huxley again. 1957, he was really productive that year. He produced new bottles for new wine. And before I continue, just think about what I just read. New bottles, new containers for new wine. We're going to become new containers. Somebody else is going to be dumping wine into us. And again, think of the esoteric significance of wine. Man is capable of forming a new picture of himself, he says, in new bottles for new wine in 1957. Man is capable of forming a new picture of himself, of the place in nature, his relationships with the new picture of himself, of his new place in nature, his revelation or his relation with the rest of the universe. His role in the universal cosmic process. In other words, his destiny. So I have called this here esoteric biopolitics or deep state biopolitics, population control and the destiny of man. So here we have Huxley uh, speaking of the destiny of man, which is, uh, I guess, tied into this transhumanism where we'll be new bottles and somebody else is going to dump some kind of wine into us. Uh, and again, this is all about us 
uh, not really emancipating ourselves if you're one of the the plebes or the goyim like me, but how you can be in service to the um, eschatology, es, eschatological end game of the uh, oligarchical master class. Building new and more adequate beliefs. And here he defines transhumanism. New bottles for new wine. As a result of a thousand years of evolution, the universe, oh, I've got to believe I must have mis, mistyped that. I, I believe he must have meant thousands of years of evolution. The universe is becoming conscious of itself, able to understand something of its past history and possible future. Again, inserting ourselves in this alchemical, alchemically, we need the adept, the alchemist, the master class themselves, the messianic class to insert itself. The vast array of the unilluminated are where tools um, for their plan of ascension. This cosmic self-awareness is being realized in one tiny fragment of the universe, in a few of us human beings, in a few of us human beings. Those who realize that are conscious are training everybody else's conscious. They're going to fill us with wine or chip us as part of their ascension. Is this some newfangled 20th century idea? Not really. It's called the great work. And it's just the latest iteration of this plan. The new understanding of the universe has come about through the new knowledge amassed in the last hundred years by psychologists, biologists, and other scientists, by archaeologists, anthropologists, and historists. And so Foucault and to some extent Agamben are going to talk about biopolitics that comes about as this idea in the 19th century through these new disciplines. And they're going to speak about it as sort of a system that ends up taking control. But that's why I go into esoteric biopolitics and the deep state phenomenon, because this system has people that create it and operate it, and it's disingenuous in the universities to speak about systems that control people in some kind of uh, accidental, willy-nilly fashion. It has defined man's responsibility and destiny to be an agent of the rest of the world in the job of realizing its inherent potentialities as fully as possible. Okay, let's finish off here with Huxley and new bottles for new wine from page 21. Objectively speaking, the new method consists of cumulative tradition forming the basis of that social heredity by means of which human societies and cultures maintain themselves and develop. And this is, of course, what he said uh, UNESCO was all about, educating the totality of the human mind and body for this project. It sounds science fictionish. Um, unfortunately, it isn't. But it also has a subjective aspect. Cumulative tradition, like all other distinctly human activities, is largely based on conscious processes, on knowledge and purpose, on conscious feelings and conscious choice. Thus, the struggle for existence that underlies natural selection, Darwin, Again, the struggle for existence, or we can think of Hitler, my struggle, um, that underlies natural selection is increasingly replaced by a struggle between ideas, the Hegelian dialectic, you've got to control both sides in order to direct history. It's a struggle of ideas, German idealism, which is really, um, as we discussed by Alexander McGee, um, Hegel, uh, the hermeticist, um, the Hegelian dialectic is just a force of a uh, hermetic Kabbalah. So we have to think this is why it's truly the adepts of hermetic Kabbalah and, of course, their means of Babylonian money magic 
and controlling the money supply that is the unseen hand that we speak of here. Thus, the struggle for existence that underlies natural selection is increasingly replaced by a struggle between ideas and values in the shared consciousness of social beings, resulting in what we may call consciousness or psychological selection. 